Hello, I'm Dr. Jeff Niebon from the Fisheries Science and Emerging Technologies, or FSET, group at the Anderson Cabot Center. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a scientific technique that our group uses to learn about the biology of marine species and to collect data that will help with their management and conservation, tagging. In recent FSET research projects, we've attached $4,000 satellite tags to tuna, put Fitbit-like tags on sharks' dorsal fins, suction-cupped cameras to sea turtle shells, implanted trackers in baby sharks, and released thousands of fish carrying a tiny piece of plastic with our phone number written on it. All of these activities are forms of tagging. Being able to work with live wild animals is definitely a ton of fun, but have you ever wondered why we go through all the trouble to put all sorts of crazy looking things on animals? What do we learn from tagging and how do we use the information that we get to improve species management and conservation? To demonstrate the value of tagging, I'll give you some examples of how I've been using tags to study tuna, skates, and sharks. The simplest form of tagging involves putting a unique mark or identifier on an animal, releasing it back into the wild, and then relying on another person, oftentimes a fisherman, to provide information on the animal if they ever capture it. This type of tagging is known as conventional tagging and is typically used to study fish because fishermen are constantly out in the ocean looking to catch fish. In terms of data, Conventional tags are pretty simple and only provide information on the status and location of the fish at two points in time. So for example, suppose we tagged and released a skate on April 27, 2016 when it was 78 centimeters long. Over two years later, this same skate was recaptured by a fisherman and measured to be 90 centimeters long. From this recapture, we know where and how far the skate moved over time and how much it grew. This information may seem pretty basic, especially if you only think of it in terms of one individual fish, but data on hundreds or thousands of tagged fish can really teach us a lot about them. In the past five years, we've worked with several partners to deploy thousands of conventional tags on really different fish species, from cod, haddock, cusk, and thorny skate in the Gulf of Maine, to big eye, yellowfin, and skipjack tuna in warmer tropical waters of the North Atlantic. So far, hundreds of these tags have been recaptured by fishermen and taught us some really cool things about our study species. For example, we've learned that thorny skates grow really slow in our home bodies and that they really don't move around that much, instead preferring to remain around the same general area even over multiple years. In contrast, some yellowfin tuna have moved over hundreds of miles in just a couple of weeks. As useful as conventional tagging can be, some research questions just need more detailed information to be able to be answered. Fortunately, that's where electronic tags can help. Electronic tags, which are basically just like little tiny computers, come in all shapes and sizes and functionalities and can collect a lot of detailed information during the time that they're attached to the animals. For example, for the past five years, I've been working with a team of researchers to better understand the migration and environmental preferences of common thresher sharks in the North Atlantic Ocean using pop-up satellite tags. While attached to the animal, these tags collect and store data on depth, water temperature, and location. They are programmed to pop off the animal after nine months then they float to the ocean surface and transmit all of those data directly to our computer via satellite. Knowing where common thresher sharks exist in the vast North Atlantic Ocean and what depths and temperatures they prefer allows fishery managers to design regulations that establish protections at given spaces and times and forecast how the species distribution and movements may be impacted by things like climate change. Electronic tags are also really useful for understanding how fish are impacted when they are caught and released from fishing gear. For example, we recently used those same pop-up satellite tags to determine how often thorny skates survive when they are caught and released in a New England commercial fishery. Unfortunately, the thorny skate population in New England is in pretty serious decline, so fishermen are required to release any thorny skates that they catch. But catch and release will only help the thorny skate population recover if the skates survive after release. Fortunately, our satellite tag data showed that most thorny skates survive after being caught, which means that the current conservation strategy of mandatory release is assisting with the species recovery. Before I go, I wanted to take a moment to address a question that we often get about tagging, and that is, does tagging harm the animals? While I can't say for sure how the animals feel about it, I can say that scientists have worked really hard to design tags that minimize impacts to the animals that we're trying to study. After all, 
harming them would defeat the purpose of tagging them in the first place. At the New England Aquarium, we work with our Animal Care and Use Committee to ensure that all tagging activities are conducted in a responsible manner and will not prevent the animal from going about its normal life. When designing our tagging projects, we also always make sure that our data will make a meaningful contribution to our scientific knowledge of a species or directly address a topic of critical importance for its management or conservation. Remember, our ultimate goal is to collect data that will help create healthier oceans.